Hi. I don't think I've ever showed you one, but Prince or Mark may have in the past. It does look similar to one other bird that I know we have showed you, and that's the only clue I'm going to give you. So send your answers through to questions at wildearth.tv or hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. And I'm interested to know which of you will be the first to get this bird right. It's seldom that we actually get to show you the bird whilst it's calling. So this is a bonus, especially because it's a bird that we don't see very often or don't get to show you very often. We do get fleeting glimpses of them flying past. But certainly not quite as good as this. An opportunity is available very often. As you can see, this squirrel has now made its way further down the tree and it may be warm enough now to start its morning, morning foraging for snacks. They feed on a variety of seeds and nuts and often have to forage through old piles of elephant dung in order to try and find these little nuggets of goodness. It will also have a stash within these natural cavities that it's poking its head out of now to keep it going through the winter, but it'll be continually working to try and maintain a well-packed pantry in case of tough times that may lie ahead. for the squirrel to make its move and also wait for you guys to send through which bird it is that we can still hear calling. It's flown off into a different tree, but you certainly would have had long enough to have a good look at it. But we've got a question through from Shanae. And good morning and thanks for sending your question through. Shanae is interested to know why there appear to not be very many female guides around? And that's a great question, Shanae. It certainly is an industry that's openly accessible to ma males, females, young, old, uh, people from other countries. So there's no prejudice or factors that would make it more difficult for a, a, a female or a foreigner to become a guide and I think it's often simply a lack of interest from those genders. I know at a large where I used to work, 25% of our team was female staff so there certainly it may be certain lodges which are more inclined to employ female guides but if you break it down and determine that uh, or just realize that there's no difference between a male or female when it comes to doing this job 
as long as you can drive a car around and look at animals and talk to them and entertain your guests, anyone can do it. But it is a good point. There aren't as many females as males, not even close. And I think it is fair to say that over the years it is becoming more common for ladies to be guides. But why there aren't more, I'm not entirely sure. I know a lot of lodges like to incorporate females into their guiding team to create a balance. And it, from my experience, does create a great balance to have some female guides on the team. And at the lodge where I spent the majority of my guiding career, we always had three or four female guides out of the team of 16. Interestingly enough, on this topic, it's often women that arrive as tourists and complain when they've got a female guide, so that's something to, to, to think about. Um, my, my friends who are female guides often had the most trouble from other females, as the, the woman who would arrive wouldn't feel safe being driven around by a female. It obviously makes no sense whatsoever. And in the tourist defense, it's possibly because they would have just imagined and expected to have a male guide picking them up at the airstrip and then be a little bit taken aback by uh, a small dainty blonde arriving to pick them up. So it is what it is, but there are no reasons holding back women from becoming guides. And that's important for everyone to know. Well, we're going to leave that squirrel to it. It seems like it may be a little bit cautious of our presence, and that's what may be stopping it from disembarking the tree. And also an update on Brent's vehicle. Sadly, it sounds like the damage is a little bit worse than expected, so they're going to be working on it longer than expected and we'll probably not be out again on the sunrise drive now we're about to go through a dip so the signal may be a little bit jumpy but don't go anywhere because it will recover shortly after we climb up onto some higher ground here goes. Well, I hope you're all still there. It does vary from day to day, interestingly. And the signal and broadcast strength keep us on our toes, it always keeps us guessing and fluctuates slightly. 